sometimes you can be able to say, you know what, there is a security threat on your country. When you know exactly that there is no security threat, look at the situation in, Lib in um, Libya, what happened. Gaddafi had built a country over time. There were people who were interested in the resources that were there. Then they look at the system of democracy that was there and said Gaddafi was repressing his own people. They took him out. And now there's a disaster that is happening in Libya. Look at the situation that happened uh, um, um, uh, where, uh, uh, what is it, uh, this country, uh, um, the capital is Baghdad. Uh, Iraq. Iraq. The same thing Saddam happened. Hussein. Saddam Hussein, someone said, there were reports of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. What happened? These countries, they go in them using the so-called security implication. They go in them, destroy that particular country, and they become the same countries who started to do the, reconstru the, the reconstruction of the country. You see the biggest uh, contractors that are getting there. These are the issues that are happening. Why is Syria in ashes today? In the region, which is Sadek, former liberation movement, go to Tanzania, go to Angola, go to South Africa, go to Zimbabwe, go to, to Mozambique. Because of our ideological outlook mm. and what we stand for, for Pan-Africanism, mm -hmm. there are those other forces in the world that don't believe in Pan-Africanism. Mm -hmm. They said, let's do whatever it takes to reduce the majority of these organizations in government. And they are funding these people who have the evidence that they are funding them. Okay, but Minister, the geopolitical situation in Iraq, in Syria, in Libya, very different to the South African situation. Let's just focus on South Africa. When you talk about non-state actors, you've mentioned in the past uh, non-governmental non organizations, NPOs. Do you still believe that they are the main threat? Let me just probably ask this right. You know what you deal with? When you look at color revolution, it takes four steps. One of the steps what you do, you use media, depending on the various forms of media. You get the message across so that you can influence the minds and hearts of our people. That's in the main, that's the platform they use. In South Africa, we know there are issues that we're raising about certain media houses, which is factual, that they take a deliberate attempt, undermine the ANC, get the ANC confidence by our people to be reduced and be taken out. Mm -hmm. Then the next thing what they do is what we call it producing of celebrity leaders. You know when you produce celebrity leaders, you create platform like social network, you create particular alternatives. And in South Africa there are examples where when we use these ways, we wanted to conscientize our people, how would you see them? How will you see when these things starting to happen? 